Hello and welcome. Uh, for those of you that have had a look around our relatively new website, most of the writing and materials that we've gone through so far are pretty philosophical, even esoteric in nature. So I wanted to take this opportunity to share um, a little bit about the practical application of the three principles of universal mind, universal consciousness, and universal thought in professional settings, in working settings. My own background is one of being uh, a human resources manager in a large manufacturing company. In fact, that was my first real laboratory, if you will, where I got a chance to, to look at the principles in action in that kind of, of setting. And we particularly want to look at, I particularly want to talk about the principle of thought and how our understanding of thought and thinking plays into the quality of our interpersonal relationships and even our personal performance. So I want to share a story that uh, happened a few years ago with a client and um, it was a very interesting situation. This company that we visited um, was started by a community, a rural community. Uh, they had been fishermen, farmers, uh, and lived a very quiet life in a fairly remote part of the U.S. Uh, but they suddenly, found them, they suddenly found themselves with the opportunity to start a large business. And within a couple of years, uh, less than three years, they had gone from this rural setting to having a large operation with um, over 3,000 employees in one location. So it was a massive change, a massive cultural change. And, um, of course, when somebody starts a business like that, they have the opportunity and, and the ability to do it. Uh, doesn't necessarily know, mean that they know how to run that business. So this community, this group of owners, hired a management company. And that management company uh, put together a team for them that ranged from people all over, came from all over the U.S. who were very best at what they did in this particular business. And um, they set out to create this whole new business and get it out to the world. Now, when we got involved, uh, this group of managers and uh, the ownership team had been working together, uh, like I said, about three years. And they had started out very well together, but by the time the third year came around, some things were wearing thin, there had been some issues, there had been some conflict. Uh, a team that started out extremely confident had begun to um, have concerns about moving forward. Ownership was having concerns about some specific items like when people in their community would become a larger part of management and leadership in this organization. And so we, when we met them, um, they weren't having the best of times. And we were hired by the CEO of the management company to come in and see what we could do with our approach, our philosophy, with the principles to bring these two disparate groups together. And that's really what this was about. Now. Um, as with all of our projects, when Jan and I would start a project like this, our first process was intake. I mean, we had the CEO's point of view and a couple of other people who talked to us about what they thought was going on. And it's not that they weren't correct, it's just that we know that uh, one of the things we know about thought is that thought creates separate realities, separate perspectives on anything. So we interviewed probably close to 100 people, all of management, all of supervisors, and some employees. And through this process began to get, let's just say, a, a more widespread perspective on what was going on in that organization. So finally we came around to doing our first uh, retreat um, with the senior management team, which was about 20 people, 19 or 20 people. And so we go out to a lovely resort, and um, they're pretty excited about it. They're getting away from the usual and off to this nice place. But they don't know what we're about, really very little. They only know that uh, their CEO has asked us to come in and help them, which doesn't always make them feel good, you know, that uh, the idea that they need help, and yet they know that, right? So while they were friendly and cordial, you could feel that, you know, a little bit of stress about why we were there and what we were going to do. So for those of you that have worked with the principles, obviously you can't start out just talking about these three wonderful principles and how they create the, the world that we see and thought has to do with our experience, you really have to start with where they are. 
And as we got going, I have to admit it was a little difficult at first. I really didn't know where to start. But I've learned to trust over the years just to relax and just start talking to people and listening to people. And so as we got going, something occurred to me. And what I said to this group, and I remember it was really, it was fun, because it just came to me. I said, you know, when Jan and I interviewed all of you, um, there was something that was consistent and ran through all of the interviews, something that almost all of you told us in one way or another. And what it was that was that most of you told us in one way or another that that first year, when you had to start a company from the ground up, complete startup, set up all the departments, the mechanisms, the machinery, and the buildings, the advertising, the market, everything, that that first year of starting from nothing was the best year of your careers. And they, they looked kind of puzzled and looked around, but they were nodding, you know, like they knew they had said that, but they still didn't know where I was going with it. And frankly, neither did I. <laughs> but I knew that there was something to that, you know, because here we were with a group of people that were stressed, frustrated, and upset, and yet this thread ran through all of these interviews about the fact that that was the very best year of their careers. They loved it. They loved the excitement. They loved the creativity. They loved the camaraderie. They loved meeting new people, starting that business, seeing the customers come in. And so I said, it occurred to me to ask them, what was really different about when you got in your car in the morning to go to work in that first year than when you get in the car to go to work right now during these times? And there was a lot of very quick answers. Well, you know, ownership wasn't doing this. This hadn't happened. We were more trusted. We trusted more. And they, you know, basically laying out the same things we'd already heard in the, in the interviews. So I said one more time, okay, so tell me again. What was the significant difference between what went on when you got in your car to go to work three years ago and what goes on now? And finally somebody put up their hand and said, well, we're thinking about different things. I said, oh, okay. You're thinking about different things. And there was a few chuckles because they could kind of get the drift of where I was going. And I said, here's the thing. In all of our careers and all of our lives, lots of things happen that affect how we think about where we are and what we're doing. And obviously that's happened to you. But what if I was to tell you that there was a way, there was an understanding that would allow you to regain that wonderful feeling of excitement, drive, motivation, enjoyment, and happiness. What if I was to tell you that there was an understanding that could bring that back for you? Would that be a good thing? Well, most people agree that would be a good thing. But again, you could see the, the doubt. <laughs> you know, it would be a good thing, but you don't know what it's like. And I said, okay, I accept that I don't know what it's like. But I do know that people can shift their thinking. I do know that people can see things from a deeper level of understanding and let go of certain things. So let's just play a game here. Let's just say, for the sake of argument, that this was possible. That you all could get back to that state of mind that you had when this all began. Would that help in any way? And it was the most marvelous conversation that broke out after because I started talking about, well, yeah, we, we felt invincible, we tried things, we were creative, and if we could do that again, there's a lot of things we could be solving instead of having to fight all these battles and be thinking about all this intrigue and, and politics and so on and so forth. I said, well, for the sake of we're here anyway, why don't we entertain the idea that we could get back to that state of mind? And what I would like to suggest is that if you can get back to such a state of mind, what would come out of this team and, of its, and its performance would be the very best shot you'd have at succeeding, solving these problems, and enjoying your jobs again. Is that something that we could do? And there was a few giggles around the room, but people were intrigued by then, and they said yes. And it was really neat to watch, in that very short period of time, people begin to shift and begin to notice things. They begin to notice, for instance, how often they got together to talk about what was wrong. And we started talking about, well, time is time. If we spend our time doing that, if it was possible to be in a creative state, and we spent the same time 
in the same state of mind we were three years ago, solving those problems, might we knock a few off? And they started getting into it. It was really, really neat to watch. And I'll tell you, this is just a brief thing that happened that, that really touched me. We had a break and people were off on their own. And they came back and a group of them were laughing, right? And so when we got back together, we said, what's up with you guys? What's, what's so funny? And they shared a story. They said they'd been standing around having a break in this beautiful place. And then they found themselves talking about an issue and a problem with a certain employee and so on and so forth. And they said the next thing they know, they were all into it and they were all upset and they were all talking. And one of them caught it and started to laugh. And, and they all looked at her and said, what are you laughing about? And she said, we're doing it. We're doing exactly what they said. You know, We're commiserating. We're back in that state of mind. And somebody else asked the question, was there any point in what we just did in commiserating? And everybody laughed and said, no, it didn't solve anything. So as they shared that, you could see lights going on around the room. And we had a lot of fun with it. We, we came up with the idea that commiseration is the glue that holds a negative reality together. And everybody thought that was hilarious, but they saw it. They saw what that, what that meant in terms of what thought did in a social environment, in a business. And they literally, in the course of that training, they kind of took over. The, the team took over. Because they began to see that, why not? What did they have to lose? I guess that's another way to look at it. What did they have to lose? And, you know, going forward, it wasn't that at times they didn't sink back into it. But they got something out of that. They got a sense of the power they had once they understood a little, even the tiniest bit about the principle of thought and how we all create our world together. And I know that's just a short little example, but it is a practical example. And many, many people in that room experienced profound change. Most of them, I would say, reported that change in terms of relationships with family, spouses, first. But Dennis, a couple of them really became very different people in the business, and other people noticed that difference. And it created a curiosity and an energy in that business that really served them well. So I hope we get another chance to talk about this. I really enjoy kind of sharing that story because it's one of my favorites. It's so simple, and yet when you look at it, there's a lot of power in what occurred with that group. Thanks a lot, and we'll talk again soon.